Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we're exploring how you can develop through reflection. Reflection has been mentioned in the majority of the episodes so far and is essential for improving any of the skills discussed in the series. We're going to highlight what reflection is, when the best times are to reflect, and some methods that you can use to get the most out of your experiences. And to assist in our understanding of reflection, I'll be interviewing Head of the Library John Hill and Senior Skills Officer Naomi Bowers Joseph. Okay then, thank you very much John for coming along and being involved in this podcast today all about reflection. Would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. My name's John Hill. I'm Head of Library and Digital Learning at the University of Derby. Thank you so much for giving your time out today, John, to talk about reflection. I think it's a really important subject that will really help students in developing lots of skills. So given that this is all about reflection, would you mind outlining what reflection is to the people who are watching? Uh, yeah, from, I mean, this is what reflection means to me. So it's from my perspective. I feel it's essential activity to learn from past experience. It's that what has worked well, what didn't, what should I do different, lessons learned. It's how we refine our decision-making process, our judgment. Effective uh, reflection should help build confidence uh, to understand our strengths and where we need to develop further skill sets. Yeah, so it's all about finding ways to improve and develop and grow as a person. I think it's such an important skill for students to develop, as I mentioned earlier. So why do you think it's important for students to develop reflection? Reflection is important for everybody, as as we've noted, but for students, it's really that doorway to developing our skills. Uh, really, as I say, in terms of defining reflection, it's that essential activity of when we go through experiences, whether that's uh, working on particular activities, whether that's working on projects, it could be assignments, it could be group work. It's taking that opportunity to, to reflect on how things have gone, uh, thinking about, well, what worked well for us, what we do differently. Uh, so we, we need that constant opportunity to, to reflect, think through uh, were there mistakes that were made, which is, is good. You know, we, we need to make mistakes to be learning from them. Uh, what we don't want is to keep making the same mistakes. So that's really where the reflection comes in to say and recognize, OK, there was a mistake in the, the process. How do we avoid making that same mistake? On the flip side, what things worked really well, whether, it, as I say, it be in a project or an activity or a piece of a assessment. And it, it's really that scaffolding, that constant iteration of taking a moment to, to think back through the scenarios and taking forward the good and leaving behind uh, some of the, the things that didn't work so well. I think that's such a vital element of reflection is um, learning about what, not just what went wrong, but how what went right so that when you fix what went wrong and when you take those actions from from the failures or from what you've done you don't actually affect negatively the good things i think it's so so easy when you focus just on the negatives to make a change that will then actually harm the good things absolutely agree i mean there's a real important balance here about it it shouldn't spill over into harsh uh, critique of yourself we need to get that balance right it's not about beating ourselves up about every wrong decision that we make it's about being kind to ourselves keeping it positive i mean an example would be if we were doing a piece of group work and there's those project management type skills coming mm -hmm. through we could see on reflection maybe we re were strong in that area that we planned well that led to to good outcomes for the project or on the flip side might see actually we didn't do enough uh, adequate planning is that an area that i want to 
go off and get some more skills in terms of project management and apply those to, to future projects. I definitely think group work's an area that I did a lot of reflection on when I was a student, especially because you you often have multiple opportunities to engage in it. And even if you don't join your degree, you can do it afterwards. But yeah, it was really essential to reflect on what happened in group work, especially even if not everything went to plan or any difficulties were had. And that's regardless if you did well in the overall mark. If something went wrong, reflect on that and think, how can you improve that going forwards? Absolutely agree with that. There's so many dynamics happening in that 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 group workspace that it is a rich area for reflection. Mm, I do agree. I think actually group work is a really good example, but there are also lots of other things to reflect on. So I thought this would be a good question to ask to the skills team's own reflection guru, Naomi Bowers Joseph. So hello, Naomi. So other than group work, what should students reflect upon? Oh, everything. I don't. I honestly don't think that there is an aspect of study that students can't reflect on and can't make use out of reflecting on. So anything, but I would say particularly things that, because obviously reflecting on everything is quite a big ask as well. So I would focus on things that are new. So things you've done for the first time are really good things to reflect on. So the first time you hand in an assignment, that might be a good time to reflect on that assignment writing process. And the first time you have to do a presentation might be a really good time to reflect on that presentation. Um, And studying has so many new opportunities coming through and that there's lots of new things that hopefully you'll be doing um, that provide those really good opportunities to reflect. And then I would also say things that you feel have gone particularly well or things that you feel have gone particularly badly are also really good points to stop and reflect. So if something has gone badly, it's not gone the way that you wanted to. So again, this could be anything to do with studies. So it could be that you were late for a lecture. That's not an ideal thing. That's a really good time to reflect. Why was I late? What can I do next time to stop myself being late? Um, Or if something's gone particularly well. So um, if you've handed in an assignment, you've got a really good mark for you and you're really pleased about it, or you've got some really good feedback from someone, or you've had a conversation with your lecturer or or in a seminar where you're just feeling really, really positive about it. That's another really good chance to stop and say, this feels really good. What have I done? What have I contributed to this, Mm. this positive feeling? What can I replicate? What can I build on for the future? So really, I think, like I said, the answer to your question is absolutely everything. You can reflect on absolutely everything that you want to, but look out for those key moments where you think that reflection will be particularly useful to you. Yeah, definitely. Especially if you're going to spend quite a bit of time reflecting on something, then it's worth doing when it's that when there's that particular benefit from doing it. I think you raised a really good point there when you mentioned about how you reflected on the things that went really well to look at why they went well because that's always important if you've done if you surprise yourself and done very well what's caused that definitely so we're talking then generally about academic reflection reflecting in academic things but when you said everything does everything include things that are outside of your course and your assignments i personally i try and reflect on the things that I do in my life, definitely. And again, not absolutely everything because then there wouldn't be time for that. (laughs) You could get really quite caught up in that. But those key moments. So an example I often give is when I first started working in the library, I um, did a reflection at the end of every day for my first week and then at the end of every week for my first month. So I didn't carry on doing it daily because that wasn't a good use of my time. I started off daily and then I went weekly and and then gradually stopped doing it as it stopped giving me value but that was starting a new job reflection is not complicated it is as simple as thinking what did I have for breakfast was that enough do I want to look at something else what might I do tomorrow to have a different breakfast to set me up differently for the day that's reflection and we all do it all the time in our lives and it's important to do it and those key moments that I was talking about earlier are times that it's useful to actively do it We, we passively reflect I think a lot So you might put on a pair of shoes that are uncomfortable and think next time I'm going for a long walk, I'm going to wear a different pair of shoes because these shoes are not comfortable. Hmm. That's reflection. It's a passive reflection, not doing it in a, in a structured sense or a formal sense, but you are doing it and just picking those moments to pull reflection out from, um, from a passive reflection into an active reflection can be really key generally in life. Yeah, definitely. I think those are some really good pieces of advice in terms of how reflection is something that you do naturally and something that you do 
everywhere and with almost everything and a lot of times you do it without even thinking so actually it might not be as hard as you think since you're already doing it and all you need to do really is apply that to your academic practice so Naomi are there any methods that students can use to to actually actively reflect rather than passively reflect yes so there's lots of academic theories of reflection, lots of models of reflection that you can use. And you'll find this if you're studying um, any subject that asks you to formally reflect. So if you're asked to do a ref piece of reflective writing for academic study that you then submit, you will generally be asked to use a model of reflection. And there's lots out there. Um, and they're all slightly different, but they all work on the same basic principle. And this is the principle that I would say is worth using if you're reflecting yourself on, on what you're doing. So first you have a point where you describe what's happened. What was the situation? So let's say you've been late for your lecture. So the description could be, I left the house at 8.30 this morning. I caught the bus. I arrived at uni 10 minutes late. I walked into my lecture late. That's a description. You've not done any further thinking about it, but you've described what happened. The next stage is a critical thinking stage. So you start asking yourself some critical questions about that. So was the bus on time? Was I running at any point? <laughs> um, who did I stop and talk to? These critical questions. Why was I late? That might be a good one to start with um, because you might not need to think about it in that much detail. But those critical questions to really dig further into what, what happened and why, essentially. And then you have a future focus stage. So that is what will I do tomorrow morning to make sure that I am not late? Or what will I do next week when I have this same lecture again to make sure I'm not late? So at its most basic, that is what I would recommend. Describe what happened, ask yourself some critical questions about, about that event, and make a plan of action for the future. Now, you can get more detailed into this. And like I said, there's lots of models that take you different ways around this, but they all share those same three features. And what I would recommend if you want to do that extra step and that extra thinking, and this, I think, works particularly well if you're starting to write it down, if you're doing a written reflection to, to, to really go into an issue. And that's think about your key questions of who, what, where, when, how and why. So your descriptive stage. What happened? How did it happen? Why did it happen? Who did I see? Who did I talk to? Who helped me? Um, all those questions. When? When did I leave the house? Going back to this example about being late for a lecture. Um, who did I see? Like, who did I see on the way? All these questions will help give you more details that you can then work on. So even in the descriptive stage, the richer your description with all those questions, the more information you've got to work on. And then again, in your critical thinking stage, use those questions. So um, how was I feeling when I did this? Um, who was helpful? So who did I speak to is a description descriptive question. Who was helpful is a critical question because it's going into that it's more subjective. It's, it's, it's your lived experience of that and starting to assign values to things. Um, so talking to one person might be helpful to you. Talking to another person might not be helpful to you. They might both take the same amount of time. But if one of them's helpful and one of them's not, that's a useful thing to identify. Mm. Um, and then into your future focus stage again. So think about the who, what, where, when, how and why. Who should I avoid on my commute into work if I want to make sure I get there in time? Um, what time should I leave in the morning? When should I leave if I want to get to my lecture on time? How should I travel? All those questions will help make a really rich, detailed plan of action for the future. Yeah, I think that plan and those questions, they can be applied to almost anything. So it doesn't have to always be applying it to your uh, problem of trying to get to lectures on time it could also be applied to how you could improve your assignment grades based on the feedback that you've been given yes absolutely the skill of reflection is a skill and once you have that skill you can apply it to all manner of different situations yeah and as you were saying earlier you already have a foundation in that skill by passively reflecting on everything that you do naturally it's just about applying that and going further and asking these questions. Yeah. And also, we need to very much say that 
like I say, you can you can reflect on positive experiences, and it doesn't need to be picking holes in what you're doing because that can be that can be honestly quite sad to do to look back and pick holes in what you did. But um, you can use this to pick out the positive things. What was actually really good about this experience? What am I going to do again? Building on those positives is just as important, if not more important, than resolving the negatives. Yeah, definitely. I think it really goes into that skill of critical thinking and making sure that that applies to both positives and negatives and keeping the positives the same whilst also working actively to improve the negatives. So just moving on now, we have a method to reflect. But John, are there any tools that you'd use for reflection? Uh, there's different techniques. There are technologies out there. There are, there are eight portfolios. So that can be good practice that we are locking ourselves into saying, actually, I'll build this into my calendar, that these are the points of reflection. It doesn't need to be attached just to assessments or group work examples. It could be more on a calendar basis. I definitely agree with that type of um, giving yourself time to actually reflect into your calendar. Something I've been doing at the moment is I've been writing a a reflective diary of myself based on what I've been doing, and it's very good to get give yourself feedback when you can see what your opinions and emotions were when you were completing a task beforehand and that can really be useful for when you're giving yourself feedback on that activity um so after you've completed that activity um you can see how you felt before it because it's very easy when a piece of coursework goes well you think oh yeah that was perfect but then you can see actually what were the individual struggles i had and actually how can i improve that process that goes on behind the scenes Something I was talking to uh, Dr. Fiona Shelton about in the episode about growth mindset was we were discussing about how feedback is an opportunity to grow. And part of that's through reflection. I wondered if you agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, that's where the, the growth is and the the importance of, of reflection. I mean, that, the example that you've just given, having that, that diary, having that, that time log in effect to, to go back and see how... You were feeling at certain points what the lessons were learned were learned at, at, at various points that enables the growth because exactly how you described it there about we can often be okay piece of work is completed we either got some good feedback or perhaps there might have been some negative feedback and we're straight on to the the next task that's missing that opportunity to, for growth by not going in, not spending that time to reflect. And it's, it's really a, an important skill that that needs time to work on. It doesn't come naturally, although we would think just from the word reflection, oh yeah, of, of, of course we reflect, but it is something that we have to work at. So we've just been discussing about reflecting after you've completed something. Do you think that there's any merit in reflecting throughout a process? So even if you haven't finished what you've done yet, reflecting during and as you're going through that process. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, with the with the example of the, the project, something that we do with project work, and it, it's particularly uh, in the, the type of projects that we run across the, the university, what we'll do is lock in uh, particular milestones. And, and this is something that, can translate across to assessment work, uh, the group work examples that we, we've already given, that there'll be certain milestones that will say, okay, whether it's the first draft of a piece of work, that trigger for reflection. I think the, there's always that ongoing activity of reflecting during uh, delivering a piece of work that should then help the next draft that we've we've taken that time we've we've locked it in so yes it it, it must be a, an ongoing exercise and and not just something that we that we do at the end of the process i definitely think it's useful especially a longer to medium term projects such as even in the case of a student so a dissertation or a assignment just having some time just to take stock and work out where you are what you, what you need to do and even if you just every week giving yourself 20 minutes in the morning on the Monday morning, just think, okay, where am I at? What have I done so far? How is this process going? Do I need to change my timelines at all? I think that's just really useful. Okay, so Naomi, talking more about the academic side of reflection, do you think it's worthwhile that students reflect on their past assignments before embarking on a new one? Absolutely, absolutely. And 
having finished an assignment, submitted it, handed it in um, and got your mark back and got your feedback back is a really key moment to stop and reflect because a lot of studying is self-directed, a lot of studying, um, you don't get that feedback in a regular manner in the same way you would at school, for example. When you're studying at university, generally you have a term or a semester of teaching and then you have your assignment and you get your feedback from that. So this is your opportunity to really gauge how you're doing. I, I, and I found this really unsettling when I was um, in my first year because it's a long time to wait to get an idea of how you're doing and different courses will work in different ways you might find your course has got um unmarked assessments or, or things that don't contribute towards your final mark as you go through and um, to help give you that um that feedback and these are those really key points to stop and and take stock and reflect because here if you've got feedback from whoever's marked your work you have something concrete that you can look at and say this is the feedback that I've been given. I'm going to reflect on this. I'm going to really think about how that can impact the next assignment that I'm doing. Because studying at university is about improving and getting better with each assignment. It's um, the, the assignments that you write your first assignment will hopefully not be the same as your last assignment. There, there should be progression between those. And the way to get that progression is to stop and think about what you've done and the feedback that you've received. So that might be reflecting on the formal feedback that you've got, like I say, or it might be reflecting on the process that you went through, your lived experience of submitting that assignment. It might be reflecting on how much time you spent on the various elements of it. It might be reflecting on how much reading you did. There's all lots and lots of things about your assignment that you can reflect on. And again, we can come back to those questions, who, what, where, how, when, why, and really get that rich data, rich detail to reflect on that will help you um, with your future assignments. I would say this is a really good moment to stop and formally reflect. So do something where you're writing things down. Maybe use one of the reflective models um, to structure it or, or create your own reflective model that you want to do to structure it. But do something a bit more structured, a bit more formal and, and record it in some way. Because, again, your next assessment might not be for a few months time. So writing it down, particularly an action plan. If you're making an action plan, write that down so you can refer back to it. Mm, definitely. I, I agree. It's definitely uh, worth reflecting on past assignments. And I think one of the one of the many good points that you made then was you mentioned about how you shouldn't just reflect on the feedback you've been given on past assignments, which is a really good tool. But something that links to the organization episode, I, which I discussed there, and what you've just mentioned now is you should also reflect on your own experiences. So your own organization or your own practices in terms of how you submitted it, how you've written it and so on. So the, the lecture only sees what you've submitted. They don't necessarily see what's come behind it. So only you can reflect on that. And it's still definitely worth reflecting on. I have a second question to follow up with this, Naomi. So if, if I've completed an assignment on, let's say, a report, and my next assignment is my dissertation, is it still worth me looking at the feedback I got on my report to inform my dissertation, or should it, because it's a different format, should I just ignore it and look at something else instead? No, there's always going to be things that you can pull from one assignment to the next, um, even if they're completely different, um, because there are still always going to be these key skills that you need to bring into assignments. So critical thinking, referencing, academic style in general, all of these things, it might look different what you're submitting. But the skills needed for it, time management, like you were saying, organization, all those skills are um, transferable from assignment to assignment and it's still always worth reflecting back and looking back on those. Yeah, definitely. I know across the series we've discussed lots of different skills um, so far and there's still loads of more skills that we're going to discuss later on in the series. And the, in almost all the episodes we've talked about reflection and even if you aren't just reflecting on how you academically write, you may still be reflecting on the other skills from across the series and building up those yes i mean you've talked about growth mindset previously and reflection and growth mindset really do go hand in hand i think a lot of the time but you can look back and think did i have a growth mindset how what 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 was my attitude going into this assignment did i feel like i wasn't going to do well did i start the assignment thinking i am not going to be good at this because i cannot write reports or did i start going in did i go in thinking I know I've not done well in 
the assignments like this I've done in the past, but this is a really good opportunity for me to build on that feedback I've had previously and to improve. So you can reflect back on that mindset you went in with and whether that helped or hindered you, for example. So mm -hmm. reflection will always be valuable, I think, because the skills that we use for studying are not all that different to the skills that we use for our everyday life. Well, even outside of assignments, you can reflect on the different skills. And I would say, I think I have even mentioned it almost all the episodes about how you can improve that skill through reflecting on it and through reflecting on your experiences. And you can use that using the method that you discussed earlier on, Naomi. Something which we mentioned just a little bit earlier, but I think it's just worth touching on again just now. Do you have any advice for how students can reflect upon the feedback that they're given? Yes, feedback, such um, it can be such a tricky subject, particularly if it's not the feedback you were hoping for. Mm. So if you get feedback that's entirely positive, I don't think I've ever had feedback on the assignment that's been 100% positive. And if you did get feedback that's entirely positive, it's not probably not the best feedback because you can't really use that as much as you could if it was negative in some way. True, true. Um, but yes, yeah, so look look for the positives, look for the positive things in your feedback and work out what you can build on, I would say as, as one tip. Um, then take a look at those aspects that where you're being told you can work on this and you can work on that. And that's really the attitude to start taking towards it. Don't think of it as I have done this wrong, I have done that wrong. It's, and this is growth mindset again, I can work on this, I can work on that. Mm. And that's the kind of attitude to um, to take to it. So with regards to that reflection, make sure you read it properly. Take the time to read it. Maybe read it once and deal with the emotional side of getting that feedback mm. and then come back to it once you've had time to process those emotions. So I think reflection can help work really well with emotions, but probably not in this context, reflecting on feedback, not best doing when you're feeling very emotional about it, either positive or negative, because you're feeling very positively emotional about something, um, then you might not look for the things that you can work on in there. Definitely. You might just go, that was brilliant. That's amazing. I'm just going to move on now. Mm. So come back to it once you've had time to process the emotions read it through, make notes on it if um, if that would be helpful. Pick out those key points and I would say focus on picking out points that you can build on and that you can say, yes, this went well and I can, um, I can build on that and points where you can say this is something that maybe didn't go so well and I can improve on that. And look for what you're being told about how you can improve and start building that action plan for what you're going to do. Definitely, I think it's some really good advice, particularly about taking the emotional charge out of the um, the feedback when you get it, especially often you have to build up a lot of courage to open that feedback. I know that's what I had to do. And then when you open it, you either see your result, you go, it's great or it's poor. And then it can be very easy then to not open it again and see if you've done great, you still, as you said, need to, uh, how you could do even better or what made it great. And if you've done badly, it can be very easy to not not want to look at that feedback as to the reasons why but actually it's really important i remember i remember on um one of my assessments uh, that i had in my second year i had a lot of ways to improve on my feedback and when i saw my results i actually just closed it immediately and it took a lot of courage then to later on go back and look at it but actually those points were things that i then was able to use in my next year assignment the same lecture and take those on board and use them so definitely as you said naomi take out that emotional charge and use it as a positive or as an opportunity to do better next time in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So John, we've heard about what Naomi and my advice is for someone who's tried hard an assignment but has had negative feedback. Do you have any advice for that? I, I think you've given really good advice there. It's, it's about that cooling down moment I, I think there's something around you know there can be some disappointment if it's if the reflection's being sparked by the example of somebody giving feedback then it can spark some of those, those negative emotions and there's that initial needing to, to vent and you know uh, kind of get, get some of those initial feelings out I can still recall and they can still tell it still stings probably 20 years on uh one of my first master's assignments uh i was given feedback it and it was below 40 percent and it you know that that was a real blur wasn't expecting it in any way to be in that kind of 
category of, of feedback. Uh, so it did take time of the shock of disappointing feedback and then being able to turn that into a positive and understanding that that actually part of the reflection and part of the well part of the feedback was just that I'd come at the question from the wrong way so it you know there was, there was good work there it was just that it was coming at something from the wrong way but I, I didn't see that immediately that technique that you've talked about of okay letting some of the emotion flow out disappointment and then coming back uh, and not just writing it off and thinking, well, I'll just worry about the next assignment. Coming back to it and re-engaging with it uh, mm -hmm. with a, a fresh mindset of really then, OK, wh what's gone wrong here? Let's pick it apart. It'd be those techniques of always saying, I want at least a, a couple of positives to come out of the, of the reflection. What are the things that in a positive way I can take forward? And, and always setting that target for ourselves about, okay, what action in a, in a forward-looking uh, perspective can I take forward? And it, if we're not doing that, then we know something's going wrong. If, if the reflection has just been, okay, I didn't do that very well, I didn't do that very well, it must be turned into a, a positive. Back to that kind of uh, skill set around problem solving, we need to be solution-focused. Uh, that's a real important attribute uh, that we need as, as students and as as, as working in organisations to have that solution focus. So I'd have that as well in, in that reflective piece about how do I turn it into something about solving and taking forward and, and growing as I go forward. I think resilience links into that as well uh, in terms of being strong and almost detaching your emotions from it. And even if you are emotional, just giving yourself that break to give yourself the fresh eyes. I think that's what you've just given there is a really good example. Um, I have just a situation that occurs to lots of people, especially in even successful people uh, like yourself, for example. So I was speaking to Dr. Melanie Pope about how lots of successful people have had failures and they've used that positively. And I feel like that's a really good example of that. And the point that you made uh, from Melanie, um, I mean, I'd just like to come into to that one as well. Yeah. Kind of careers are littered with many, many, many mistakes and, and getting things wrong. And, and that's the, the learning process. I think I said earlier on uh, about reflection in terms of avoiding uh, making the, the same mistakes. So that, that's really what uh, reflection can, can help us with, that what we, we don't want to see is that we keep making the, the, the same mistakes. So the, the point that I was making is that you know, I, I've got a whole array of experiences of where I've made mistakes. And the reflection where it helps us is not to make the same mistakes again. I think that's when we get into difficulties. OK, maybe we make the same mistake a couple of times, but it's really through that reflection that it'll say, this is what went wrong. This is what created the problem and the mistake. Let's not go down that territory again. Thank you for your advice about reflection, John. Before we end the podcast, I have one final question for you that I ask everyone at the end of the episode. And that is, what advice do you have for a student who wants to be successful? I think to this, it's, uh, it's probably some of the, the obvious things, but it's getting involved with opportunities. Uh, getting involved with people. People will want to hear your voice, uh, considering how can I help with those those opportunities that, that do arise. Uh, throughout university, there's, there's so many opportunities uh, and it's, it, it's, it's engaging with them. It's uh, really, there might be, you know, some factors in the mix there about confidence, about, well, what can I contribute? Uh, what what skills have I, uh, have I got that I, I can bring to the picture? But I'd say it's uh, it's about backing yourself. You know, you will have skill sets uh, that will be valuable. Uh, you will have a voice that brings value uh, to all these range of, of different opportunities. So it's backing yourself, knowing that there's value that you can contribute, uh, and just seizing those opportunities. 
I agree. I think taking opportunities is probably the thing I would advise if I was asked a similar question. I think it's so important. Okay, Naomi. So we've heard John's advice for being successful as a student. But I was just wondering, what advice do you have? My key piece of advice for being successful as a student is to try and take an active part in your own learning. So studying at university, studying anywhere is about learning things. And often we can think about learning as I am going to turn up to a lecture and I'm going to be told information, I'm going to absorb that information and that's wonderful, I have learned things. My top tip for success would be to do that, absolutely do that, but also take an active part in your own learning. So look for opportunities to learn more, look for opportunities to experience things more, do that reflection, reflect on your own skills. The more that you can actively take responsibility, I guess, for your own learning as you're doing it, the more you'll get out of the experience at the end. Definitely. I think that's really, really important. Thank you very much for all your contributions today, Naomi. I've really appreciated your advice about reflection and all the different models. It's been lovely talking to you. Thanks to both of our amazing guests today for their time and insights about reflection. There is indeed much to reflect upon from this episode. So here are the three key points that I will take from this episode with me and try to implement into my future practice. First, make sure to plan time and to reflect after doing something new or after you've done something that challenged you. It's very easy to skip this, but do try and put this time in. Secondly, ensure that when you reflect, you reflect both on the positives and the negatives. This ensures that your action improves the weaker aspects without removing or affecting the stronger aspects of your practice. Finally, when going through each stage of your reflection, be critical and ask yourself critical questions. Naomi has very kindly created some example questions that you can use for each stage of your reflective process. A link to these can be found in the description of the YouTube version of this podcast on the Derby Uni Library YouTube channel. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalabar, Tim Zalstra, and Naomi Bowers-Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.